Hey folks, I'm Mr. Hartzer, and I want to talk to you in this video about key features of functions. So hopefully this is just an extra resource for my students and we can really get this information rock solid. All right, so here we're talking about the key features of functions and it's as we're related to this particular graph that you'll see on your screen. And uh, the first one is the domain. So there's a ton of different ways of writing this and that's some of the things that I've practiced in class. I keep showing you all the multiple ways of writing it. So first thing is, it's a parabola. I uh, cut off the graph a little bit, but there are ends and these keep going forever and ever. And oh, you might hear the band in the background. They're practicing pretty much right outside my window. It's awesome. But because of this, because it keeps going farther to the right and farther to the left, that means my domain is all real numbers. Or we could write that as, oh, not a bracket, a parenthesis, negative infinity to infinity, or we could say that it's all X values, such that X is an element of the real numbers. The next thing I wanna look at is my range. The range is my Y values, my inputs, and it's not all real values. So I'm starting right down here, and that's at two, and it goes up from there. So it's greater than or equal to the two. So this is going to be something like maybe Y is greater than or equal to two, or it's a solid bracket, two, and then, up to infinity with a parenthesis on the infinity. It's always a parenthesis on infinity. And then, or I could write that this is my Y values such that Y is greater than or equal to two. My X intercepts, well, this one's kind of easy, right? My X axis is in green all the way down here on the bottom. This is my X axis down here. I don't cross it. And if I don't cross it, there's no X intercepts. So that part's easy. There are none. My Y intercepts though, different story. So I have this graph already up. And because of that, I know I cross right here three. So I, some people are fine with just writing down three. I would prefer that to be written down as a coordinate point. So my answer for my y-intercept is actually zero, three. That's my y-intercept. Awesome, so let's move on to the next one. All right, so we're gonna continue to look at some key features. And right now we're gonna start off with, where's my cursor, there we go, interval that is positive. So I don't know why they write interval positive, but we're really just looking at the like parentheses or brackets and saying what numbers it goes to, right? Where am I positive? Well, it's actually this entire graph because the whole thing is above my X axis. So I could put here all real numbers or I could write again, this is from negative infinity to infinity. My interval that's negative, well, again, there's nothing here, right? It's all above my X axis, so it's all positive. So there is none here, so I'm going to say none. That's just so I know as a teacher that you didn't just leave it blank because you didn't understand it. Write me none, write none down there. Interval that it is increasing. So where is it going up? Well, that starts right here at its vertex. And as I move to the right, it goes up. So what X values is that true for? Well, one and up. So starts at one, goes up to infinity. And at the one, I'm not increasing. At that point, I'm not doing anything. It's just, that's the starting point. So I'm going to write um, the parenthesis there because it's not equal to that one. At the one, I'm not currently increasing. I'm doing neither. And then the interval of decreasing. So that's actually going to be the other side of that. That's going to be negative infinity to one. Again, not equal to because at the one, I am perfectly flat. I'm neither positive nor negative. I'm not going up, nor am I going down. So there's that. Let's go on to the next one, folks. All right, so this one is pretty interesting. So average rate of change, that's the exact same thing as slope. That's why I wrote them as equal to each other right here. They are, a lot of people get that confused, but it's the same thing. Average rate of change is just the calculus way of saying slope. So just keep that in mind. And we're looking at it from zero to one. So this is where we're at zero. And this is where we're at one. So really, I just, I wanna know this chunk right here. What's the equation or what's, sorry, not the equation. What is the average rate of change or slope between these two? So that line right there, that blue one. Well, this one's actually kind of easy. I go down one and over one. So it should be a slope of one, but let's do it the longhand way. So my slope or M is my change in Y over change in X or Y2 minus Y1 over x2 minus x1. And then I need to look at my coordinate points. This one is zero, three, and then over here, 
we're at one, two, and uh, let's treat this as 0.1 and this over here as 0.2. So two minus three over one minus zero gets me a negative one over one. Well, simplifies to a good old fashioned negative one. And that is actually something I left out up here. We are going down one and to the right one. So it should be a negative one. Slope is negative one. Awesome. And that's it. That's all I got, folks. That's all we had planned for today. So watch this video and hopefully it was helpful. Hit that like button if it was. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this or if you're one of my students just so I can get those subs up. And uh, if you have any questions, email me. If you're one of my students, please, please, please email me. I love answering your questions and they're not dumb questions. Just ask them. If so many of you email me the same question, then obviously I missed something and I didn't teach you something. And I only know that if you all send me emails. So please email me if you have any questions. I hope all of you have a phenomenal rest of your day and make sure you do math carefully and with enthusiasm. Bye.